Very often it is an authentic problem, a stream that is polluted outside the school, something like that that will really engage the students and, and maybe parents will become a part of this project too. Um, so it's organized in a way that um, puts children in the position of learning these skills that we want them to learn, to work collaboratively with each other, to identify the problem and then maybe the underlying problems to think about what they need, what resources they will need to solve them, to go find um, some answers maybe with experts in the area or maybe on the internet, different ways of um, finding res their access to resources. And then they have to start to put together the solution. Um, and so that whole idea of synthesizing data and presenting it I think is very important for children to learn. When we train teachers to use project-based learning, we are supporting them as they develop their own curricula. That means we don't give them a book and say, do everything in the book. We say, you are going to design the project yourself. So the powerful part for teachers is that they own the material. It's not a book. It's what they think of, and it's, more power, it's a more powerful experience for the teachers um, because they design uh, the, the, exper the, the teaching and learning experience for students. When you start at this school, you get assigned a team, and then we work very team-based, um, teachers together, um, and it's just it's how we work with uh, with our subjects. So if you get here, you learn how to do it. But it's also based on the way we work in the teacher training, solving problems um, during your training. So we have it with us from Teachers College. Every year, each of our teachers presents each of our teams of teachers. So you know we have. You, you worked with the fifth grade team. So the fifth grade team, the fourth grade team, all the teams will come and they will present at what's called a tuning protocol. And they take a project, one of their projects, and they present it in, in front of the whole staff. And we all sit together in a circle and they present their project. And then there's a time for us to ask questions and for some reflection. And it is such a powerful tool um, it's a way that each of us can know what's going on in each other's classrooms, and it's also a way of sharing resources. And so that's a way that we, we work to refine our projects every year. Yes, here from my team leader. We really have a team. They willing to answer my question when I have something like maybe I confused for the pauses, they can tell me how to do it. I think teamwork is very important. But as of anything, you don't go and you don't jump into it quickly. You spend time researching, you spend time studying, you do intervisitations, you do book studies, and then um, and then you start you start small and starting small is begin to create the structures in the class. So I would say, you know, in whatever country uh, you're talking about, needs to study what is the context, what are the main concerns, and what is the strength already. People actually don't want to change because they don't want to lose their strength, existing strength. 
And I can tell you, most of the East East Asian countries have the strength about you know we we are very serious about knowledge. We are very serious about examination. We are very serious about、um, a teacher's role in the、uh, in the society. So the only way to do it is to we try to、uh, we say learn from the strength of other system. So this is one, what I say is we also don't copy other people. We try to seeking our own way. Uh, 우리도 뭐 많은 제도 변화가 있었습니다. 뭐 일박 사전관 제도도 도입하고, 뭐 창의 인성 교육, 또현 정부는 또 자유 학기제 수업도 있고요. 그래서 여러 가지 지금 제도 변화를 하고 있고, 선생님들도 많은 노력을 하고 있거든요. 사실은 뭐 거꾸로 수업에서도 많은 반응들이 있었고, 또 배움의 공동체도 그렇고, 뭐또뭐저 혁신 학교 같은 경우도 있었고요. 그래서 여러 가지 노력들을 하다가 이제 그게 이제 하나의 좋은 모델로 이제 나와서. 그게 이제 폭발하는 거거든요. 그래서 그는 저는 그 결국 그 계기를 만드는 것이 PBL이라고 생각하고요. PBL에서 몇 학교가 성공하기 시작하면 그 다음부터 확산되는 그 속도는 어느 나라보다도 빠르고 아마 폭발적일 거라고 저는 예상하고 있습니다. <목소리> Yeah.